Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ashwini Prabhakar. I am a medical retina consultant working at Zamindar's Microsurgical Eye Center, Kalyanagar branch. Like all tissues in the body, the retina also has minute blood vessels called capillaries. And these capillaries are literally bathed in a sugar solution in diabetics. Over a period of years together, these capillaries uh, in an environment of high blood sugar undergo degeneration and get leaky, causing leakage of fluid into the retina. And if this leakage occurs in the center portion of the retina called macula, it could lead to drop in vision called diabetic maculopathy. Over time, these capillaries also get blocked, leading to hampered blood supply to the retina. That leads to a, an environment of hypoxia or reduced oxygen supply to the retina, which in turn makes the retina give a feedback signal to the blood vessels to cause more proliferation of new blood vessels in order to compensate for the lack of blood supply. However, these new blood vessels that are formed are very weak and fragile and can lead to bleeding at any point in time. To understand this, we could consider the blood vessels underneath our skin that are visible as the normal blood vessel and the abnormal blood vessel that proliferate as a result of hypoxia could be um, like the blood vessels that could grow up outside the skin or outside the retina into the cavity inside the eye. So these are frail blood vessels capable of bleeding at any time and uh, can cause sudden visual loss which could be the only symptom or the first symptom that the patient could ever have of a diabetic retinopathy that has been there for quite a long period of time but remained undetected. These abnormal blood vessels could either bleed or it could undergo fibrosis or shrinkage exerting a pull on the retina which could cause a condition called retinal detachment which if progresses to the center vision a portion of the retina can cause sudden visual drop and um, changes like these are not only difficult to treat are also to an extent irreversible. So the only way to control diabetic retinopathy is early detection, screening and uh, providing early treatment earlier in the course of the disease than waiting for complications to set in and uh, go for expensive yet not very fruitful surgeries that aim at saving the vision at that point of time and not reversing the vision loss uh, that is already set in because some amount of damage over a period of time do stay back in the eye if left untreated. Now what are the symptoms of diabetic retinopathy? So uh, we need to understand that there are certain diseases that are painful diseases and there are certain diseases that are painless. So we would be happy to get a painful disease because the pain will act as an alerting factor to the patient so that he goes to the doctor with a concern that there is a pain. However, in painless diseases like diabetic retinopathy, the patient may not have any symptom until very late in the course of disease when the only symptom would be due to a complication of the disease and may not be a symptom of the disease per se. At this point, treatment of the disease may be difficult and challenging. This is why screening in diabetic, every diabetic at the point of diagnosis and every yearly thereafter becomes very important to pick up an early disease in order to prevent avoidable blindness. Now, what are the risk factors for developing diabetic retinopathy? Firstly, it is the duration of diabetes mellitus. Need not be from the point that you're di diagnosed a diabetic because um, there could be undiagnosed diabetes even prior to the point of diagnosis, which would also act as a risk factor for developing diabetic retinopathy. Apart from the duration, the severity of diabetes or the level of your blood sugar control over, over the past years also make a difference. Apart from the diabetes mellitus, added risk factors like hypertension, your hypercholesterolemia, any degree of nephropathy or renal damage and even pregnancy or smoking could act as risk factors for early onset of diabetic retinopathy and also fast progression of diabetic retinopathy. Once the diabetic retinopathy sets in and we diagnose it, there are different treatment options to limit the progression of disease. 
if we find a diabetic maculopathy that is leakage of fluid into the retina which has caused a drop in vision we could treat it with something called anti vegf injections which are given directly into the eye which reduce the leakage of fluid and can improve the vision but it is a temporary solution but the action of these anti vegf injections last for up to a month or a little longer beyond which we may have to repeat the injection so a patient of diabetic retinopathy may need multiple injections into the eye on a monthly basis until he gets the disease stabilized and if the disease has progressed to a level there where it has reached a proliferative diabetic retinopathy where there are abnormal blood vessels grown from the retina we may have to do something called laser photocoagulation which is literally destroying the hypoxic retina or the non useful part of the retina in order to save the central part of the retina which is more useful for vision so in other words it can the laser photocoagulation is a vision saving procedure though it may have certain side effects like reduced um, contrast sensitivity reduced peripheral field of vision which may incapacitate you to driving even sometimes as the disease progresses even a laser photocoagulation may be insufficient which may necessitate a major surgery into the eye in order to remove the membranes and the abnormal blood vessels and also to clean up the blood that has leaked and this is a major surgery concern to the eye and quite expensive too so in spite of all these attempts of a surgery to fix the retinal issue sometimes the disease may remain uncontrolled um, if the systemic factors are not well within control so in addition to all these treatment modalities we always advise the patient to keep his blood sugars under good control take care of his diet moderate exercise and keep the other factors under control like his cholesterol levels blood pressure and always get a renal parameters checked hence it is important to emphasize that uh, these attempts at treating diabetic retinopathy may not be as fruitful as early screening and detection of the disease at an earlier course in the disease and making the patient more aware of the problem emphasizing better sugar control and slow down or prevent further progression or worsening of the disease if you'd like to watch more videos please subscribe to doctor circle